Carl Schmidt has, of course, come roaring back into social American political life after having been in quite a bit of disrepute, particularly after the Second World War, during which time his thought was believed to be sort of irreparably entangled in Nazism and in National Socialism. It's interesting because one of the reasons that Schmidt has perhaps resonated with Americans is because his political ideas in some ways reflect our sociological reality with the extreme polarization and enmity that many Americans feel toward one another across the political spectrum. His notion that politics is centrally a kind of warlike opposition between friends and enemies has gained a lot of um, persuasion and in maybe in some senses even become uh, more visible in some senses more uh, descriptive of what people see politics as being in fact about. I just want to make a few short comments on his notion of the concept of the political and highlight certain problems in his thought, not thinking that these can be resolved all at once, there's not time to resolve them, but almost to sort of flag some dilemmas or tensions in his political philosophy that might be thought of as notes on why I am not a Schmidian particularly when it comes to his central distinction about politics, what he calls the concept of the political. As he says in his treatise, he states very clearly that the political must rest, therefore, on its own ultimate distinctions to which all actions with a specifically political meaning can be traced. Let us assume that in the realm of morality, the final distinctions are between good and evil, in aesthetics, beautiful and ugly, in economics, profitable and unprofitable. But the specific distinction to which political actions and motives can be reduced is between the friend and the enemy. I just want to note here on the margins, all too briefly, that in making this distinction, in, in, in Schmidt's insistence that the, po the political, the politics, has its own conceptual logic, its own essential um, conceptual logic that has to do with the friend and enemy, and dividing it from aesthetics and morality. He is breaking with a certain line of thought in the Western tradition that goes back to Plato, in which the beautiful and the good are in unison, in which ethics, aesthetics, and the question over what is just are in unison. In fact, the organizing question for Plato, for instance, in the Republic, in the dialogue with Socrates, the organizing question for politics is what is justice, what is a beautiful soul, what is a beautiful city. These get wrapped or bundled together in Platonic thought, and there's a kind of unbundling going on here. As Schmidt says, going on here on the page, the antithesis of friend and enemy corresponds to the relatively independent criteria of other antitheses. Good and evil in the moral sphere, beautiful and ugly in the aesthetic sphere, and so on. In any event, it is independent, not in the sense of a distinct new domain, but in that it can neither be based on any antithesis or any combination of other antithesis, nor can it be traced to these. So we see here this deeply anti-Platonic idea. So how do who decides? How do we decide if, if it's not according to an ethical set of principles, if it's not according to an aesthetic set of principles, let alone the unification of those as in Platonic thought, then how do we decide who is the friend and the enemy? Schmidt continues, the political enemy need not be morally evil or aesthetically ugly. He need not appear as an economic competitor. And it may even be advantageous to engage him in business transactions. And here comes the crucial part but the political enemy is nonetheless the other, the stranger. And it is sufficient for his nature that he is in a specifically intense way, existentially something different and alien, so that in the extreme case, conflicts with him are possible. These can neither be decided by a previously determined general norm, nor by the judgment of a disinterested and therefore neutral third party. So this is important. The enemy for Schmidt is the one who negates your way of life. And it can have such an intensity to it that it bundles up the beautiful, the good, but from perspectival cases. Not a beautiful or good that bundle up the just and the political as a unifying point, such that Plato can say the just man is a friend to all people, 
right, that the just person is a friend to all people. There is no one person who could be a friend to all people like Socrates or Buddha or Christ under this schema. There is no bridging that which existentially eliminates or uh, erases your way of life, that way of life that when it exists, it marks the end of your way of life. I want to flag here another tension, the one with Aristotle in the Nicomachean Ethics. For Aristotle, we always share goods that feed into and are mixed into the political, into the regime, even if we remain divided by regime types. We share certain goods as a kind of zoon politicon. We share goods of the family. We share goods of family life. We share goods of certain practices that we carry out, crafts. Why uh, is there not a space for cooperation around these communities of the good, maybe communities of scholarship, communities of music? These confound and intermix with the political for Aristotle in such a way that the division between friend and enemy is not so intense and dichotomous. I might be friends with the Schmidian enemy and not actually be that existentially alien way of life. There may not be that existential divider when it comes to things like the goods of the household, food and so on, but even when it comes to complex goods. Some of these might be historically contingent, like religious ones, might share goods that are not political. We might find ourselves in different political positions, but share goods that arise out of our religious practices. So for Aristotle, the distinguishing feature of politics is not a split between the friend and enemy because I can be mistaken about the goods that comprise my way of life ethically. And that confusion about the goods that comprise my way of life ethically is such that I might not understand that I already participate in goods with that person or group with whom I think I'm an existential standoff, but in fact I share certain goods, the goods of learning certain practices, the goods of certain basic needs just as a political animal. Okay, continuing here for a second with Schmidt, so who decides? Because Aristotle's challenge to Schmidt is we're never in quite that dichotomous a friend-enemy standoff with one another. So who decides who's the real enemy? Schmidt says there can't be a disinterested third party. There can't be a philosopher uh, who decides it for us. In fact, only the actual participants, Schmidt writes, can correctly recognize, understand, and judge the concrete situation and settle the extreme case of conflict. Each participant is in a position to judge whether the adversary intends to negate his opponent's way of life and therefore must be repulsed or fought in order to preserve one forms, uh, one's form of existence. What if the existential group I belong to is not in agreement, however, about who really negates our way of life? What if there's a pluralism of views about our existential way of life and who really pits and, and presents a kind of negation, what do I do then? What if I have a Socrates who says, no, in fact, I'm a friend, even though you view me as an enemy? Here comes in Schmidt's notion of the decider, the state of emergency, something I can't go into, but a kind of dictatorial power that decides for us, decides who the friend and enemy is for us. I want to flag here a final tension or problem for Schmidt, which is, that person who decides the dictatorial power, let alone at the level of the rank and file of an existential way of life, might themselves be untransparent about who the friend and who the enemy is. In their heart, there might be a conflict over time or even in a kind of synchronic moment about who's my real friend and who's my real enemy, who's my allegiance to. This is the Augustinian objection that the human heart is not transparent to itself. And on a further time horizon, I might find that that person who I now consider to be my enemy will be my friend, and that person I now consider to be my friend is my enemy. In other words, I can't gather up existentially entirely my community, my point of self, in such a way that clarifies the dichotomy that Schmidt needs for the friend-enemy distinction. It might be that who is my friend and who is my enemy is intermixed and confused in my very heart.